It's good to have everybody here tonight. Hey, Chad, let's go ahead and start song one. Everybody else ready? Uh, yeah, uh, well, just in case somebody else forgot, how's that song go again? I got you. Play it again, play it one more time. Your rehearsals don't have to look like that, but what is the best rehearsal format? Several of my YouTube worship leader friends in the last you know, year or so have posted videos about their rehearsal format and how they do things. Uh, while I think those are good, one of my goals for the last eight years has been to find the absolute best way to do rehearsal. And I think this is it. I'm no stranger to the long, drawn out, intense rehearsals, but I've found that the short, concise rehearsals are best for worship teams built up of mostly volunteers. Your team's time is incredibly valuable. Now with a standard three to four song set list, your rehearsal is gonna be about an hour and a half. Ours are every Thursday from 6.30 to eight. Let's look at our format overview for a second. I'll explain each of these segments in more detail later in this video, uh, but for now, let's just look at it as a whole. Sound check is 20 minutes. Our full crash through, I'll explain that, is 30 minutes. Final corrections and transitions, we like to give that 10 minutes. Then we reset to the top, start a countdown, that's five minutes. And then our full worship set is 25 minutes. If you add all that up, it's an hour and a half. And then at the end, at right at eight o'clock, we like to pray. And that can take five, 10, 15 minutes. You know, whatever we're praying about or whatever the conversation ends up being, we circle up and pray. So it can go over, but you know, that's prayer time, not rehearsal time. That's it. If that's all you wanted, then the video's over. And uh, I'll see you in the next one. But I'm gonna go into more detail on all these items and I'll put time codes on this video so that way you can check those out individually or come back to it. So let's keep going. The first 20 minutes should be dedicated to the sound check. That's line checks for vocalists, instruments, and loops. So that's no input left behind. That's kind of how you should think. So this should be for front of house and for live stream. During this time, your visual media team will run their checklist and that includes lyrics, backgrounds, videos, and whatever else your visual media people will actually do for that service. And you can see here, we are using ProPresenter. So we're gonna run through our ProPresenter checklist and make sure we have everything ready for the service but for this rehearsal as well. And if you do need backgrounds for your service, you could check out Church Motion Graphics. So Church Motion Graphics is your go-to resource for making your worship ministry look great. Every week CMG releases eye-catching screen visuals that are specifically designed to look great in churches. They're perfect for worship lyrics, announcement slides, sermon and presentations, and really anywhere else in your church that could benefit from a fresh look. The best part is, they are pretty affordable. With their premium subscription, not only will you receive worship backgrounds every month, but you also gain access to thousands of motion backgrounds, sermon and announcement templates, and social media graphics, and so much more. So go visit churchmotiongraphics.com and enter the coupon code WLH when you go to check out, and you'll get $15 off your premium subscription. That's churchmotiongraphics.com. Livestream team will also run their checklist and check all of their equipment if you are able to have the camera people there with you. Um, that's really important for them to be able to see what's gonna happen on that stage so they know what to film, they can make notes and be ready for Sunday. Really important that they're there if you can get them there. And your front of house sound tech should also have run their checklist before they did that sound check initially. So they need to get there a little bit earlier. Your next 30 minutes after your sound check is gonna be what I call the crash through. Now the crash through time is when you run each song one after another with no expectations of perfection, like at all. Now these are full run throughs of each song in order. And you're only gonna stop for these major corrections because those small corrections can be talked about at the end of each song. Here's a little tip for you. Your musicians are probably already thinking about all those little bitty small corrections or those little mess ups. So they'll probably self correct in your final run through. Just something to remember. The next segment is final corrections. I give myself about 10 minutes to talk and or play through any segments or transitions that need to be worked on, you know, just a little bit. It can also be used for those new songs that need a little more work 
before we head into the final worship set playthrough. This segment can be really cool because it can give your team time to voice any concerns or ask any questions that they may have had, you know, during that crash through segment. Because, you know, you're not the only voice there and maybe you didn't think of something that's really important that needs to be worked on or fixed uh, before we head into that full run through. After our final corrections, we have five minutes. This is a five minute countdown. Yes, the actual one that you're gonna use on a Sunday morning because we're about to go into our full worship set as if it's Sunday morning. So this countdown is the one that you're gonna use that leads you into that first element or that song. So countdown songs, videos, other elements are also included in this time, exactly the way you would start your service. Now it's time for our full worship set. Once again, we are in the mindset that it is now Sunday morning. Forget that, it doesn't even matter that it's Sunday morning. We're in the mindset that we are gonna worship together in this moment. We've made time to practice at home. We had time to rehearse together for the first you know, 20 or so minutes. We've made corrections in what we have to do. The countdown is over, it is time to worship. Including, but not limited to, opening statements, videos, songs, scriptures, prayers, giving, and more. Everything that you're gonna do in your worship set in this time before the message needs to be done now. So remember, if it's before the message, it's included in this time, yes. We typically end this time in prayer, like I said earlier, and it's, it can be a very beautiful time because after we worship together, we all come up to the stage, we huddle around or get in a big circle. Sometimes we talk about needs or things that we need to pray about, and then we pray. So I really encourage you to make time for prayer, either before or during or after rehearsal. It'll make a difference. There are some prerequisites to have a rehearsal like this. You gotta have an established culture of team members practicing before they come to rehearsal. Because rehearsal is not a practice. We rehearse what we learn and practice at home. The second requirement's on you, the worship leader. You gotta have songs planned and scheduled at least a week prior to the rehearsal. So if your rehearsal's on a Thursday, you gotta have that plan done by the Thursday before that Thursday that you're doing those songs. Does that make sense? <laughs> the third thing is you gotta have full sets planned on ProPresenter, Loop Community, Ableton, and other tech prior to the rehearsal. This will make the rehearsal go so much smoother. The fourth prerequisite would be you gotta have an established culture of the production team actually attending the rehearsal. And lastly, the worship leader, you, must know the ins and the outs of every single element happening on that stage prior to rehearsal. So at some point during the week, maybe by Thursday, right before the rehearsal, everything's completely settled as far as how you're gonna actually do the thing on Sunday. So that way you can walk through this with your team when they get there for the first time. Now you're thinking to yourself, this is all like big church stuff. This is all very established, very well manicured church culture. I don't have that, I have a smaller church or I have a, you know, maybe a family or an organizer, medium sized church. And we just, we're just not there with our culture. How do I make this happen? Well, I've actually got some tips for you. I, I wrote them down so that way I wouldn't forget. And one of the biggest ones is consistent communication of how rehearsal will actually be. You could say stuff like this, I wrote some down. We are moving to a new rehearsal format. Please practice and plan parts before rehearsal. It's as simple as that. All you gotta do is communicate that to your team. Now you're gonna have to communicate this over and over and over and over. Like this is a regular part of your communication. So do this, this is very important. Another thing you can say is, it will be very evident who is not ready. So this is where you have that conversation in private with those people and you say, you know, something like, hey, I just wanna let you know, I can tell when you're not ready and I really want you to be, to be a part of this team because it's gonna make everything so much better as we flow through this rehearsal together and just have that talk with them, be loving. You know, don't be hateful, just have it in private too. Don't bring them out in front of everybody and be like, you suck, you didn't plan your parts. You know, we're not gonna do that. We're gonna be loving, we're gonna be caring and nurturing of our team. This will take time. It's not gonna happen overnight. Depending on your team, it could take anywhere from one month to one year even to develop this kind of rehearsal format and most importantly, to develop this culture of just being ready and being on time and excited about what's happening. If this is something that you desire for your team, you've got to start right now. Right now is the best time to start this thing. But you gotta be loving. You gotta approach this with a loving attitude. 
and everybody will be excited to follow you. Remember this, if I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith as to remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. If I give away all I have, and if I deliver up my body to be burned, but have not love, I gain nothing. And that comes out of 1 Corinthians 13, verses 1 through 3, where it's about to say love is patient, love is kind. It goes on like that. So I hope this video has been encouraging to you. And again, go ahead and start right now. And uh, your team is going to actually grow and be so good at stuff like this if you hit subscribe on the... <laughs> I'm just playing. But for real, we really do want you to hit subscribe so you can be a part of this Worship Leader Hangout family and uh, just help us grow this thing and spread messages like this and how to better our teams. And also we have amazing piano tutorials by Davin and I'm just, I'm so excited for where God has taken Worship Leader Hangout and what he's allowing us to do. So again, subscribe if you haven't already and remember great worship leaders are always learning. Hey, put in the comments below before you go what your rehearsal format looks like and uh, maybe what you hope for it to look like someday. So yeah, I wanna see that. Let's keep that conversation going. I wanna learn from you guys too. All right, be good, learn a lot. I'll see you next time.